Und damit kommen wir zu Match Nummer 2. Er ist aktuell die Nummer 36 der Welt, ein Mann, der sieben Proto-Turniere in seiner Karriere gewinnen konnte. Einer der ganz wenigen, die sogar diesen sogenannten Doubleheader schafften. An einem Wochenende gleich zwei Pro-Tour-Siege. Er ist lange mit dabei, Papa von sieben Kindern. Wir heißen ihn herzlich willkommen hier in Mannheim. Jabba, Jamie Caven! Bei der WM 2013, im Jahre 2012 also, startete er als der zweitjüngste WM-Teilnehmer überhaupt damals mit 16 Jahren. Längst ist er die Nummer 1 in Darts Deutschlands, der World Youth Champion aus dem Jahre 2015, aktuell die Nummer 42 der Welt. Herzlich willkommen dem Maximizer Max Hopp! Well, from two relative unknowns on the European tour to two established names, Max Hopp, the darling of German darts, against Jamie Kevin, a former European tour finalist. Fantastic game for a second match. And Paul Nicholson joins me quickly through it. Well, Paul. Thanks, Murph. It's great to have you as well in the commentary box here this weekend in Mannheim. I think this is a fascinating contest. I am quite surprised that this is so early in the Friday afternoon, having the figurehead of German darts and Max Hoppen, someone who's making his return to the European stage for a little bit of time, Jamie Caven, who's won stack loads of tournaments. I think this game could be very interesting indeed for many reasons which we will go into. Yeah, Caven, a, a finalist at the Austrian Darts Open in 2014, lost out to Vincent van der Voort, who we will see later on this evening against Andrew Gilding. But yeah, it's just a little quirk Back of... Ladies and gentlemen, first leg, Jamie to throw first. Game on! Scheduling works for these events because the host nation qualifiers get played the night before, so they're already put into the draw before they know which players have qualified. 97. As much as the organisers would like to have Max Top given top billing. He's going to be in the kind of warm-up show today. Has the potential to be the match of the day, Paul. It could well be, you know. Sometimes it's really hard to pick the match of the day on a Friday because there are so many variables. And there are so many in this game, and one of them is the fact that Jamie Caven can really score heavily when he's on form. And that's a perfect segue, really, to talk about what's been going on with Jamie Caven this year. Well, a maximum to kick off against the maximizer. Yeah, it's the first year, really, that Caven has started to disappear from TV events. 55. He's always been such a strong floor player to get himself in the position to qualify for those events, but it hasn't happened as much for Jabba this year, Paul. And you're going to tell us why you think that might be. I think he just maybe hit a wall earlier in the season when you don't have a good start to the year sometimes. It has a cancerous effect on the rest of your season. But the encouraging thing for Jamie recently is that things are starting to pick up and I think he's just been taking little steps to get back into the rhythm. But... Earlier part of this season, you could visibly see at the qualifiers and at Pro Tour events that his confidence was shattered. And when that goes, it's very hard to get it back, and you can only do it with baby steps. It doesn't happen overnight. 44, 54, sorry. I've got to get my calculator out. Yeah, a man who's, not, who's won several Pro Tour events, Jamie Kevin, hasn't reached a quarter final this year on the floor. I'm going to ask you a little question about the draw, but we'll just see if Jamie, Jamie Kevin can finish off this opening leg by landing double top. Game Which he can. First yeah, when you Jamie are drawn against the host nation first. qualifier, in years gone by, you might have perhaps think, oh, that's a bit of a result. But then Jamie Kevin will have seen 
late last night or even this morning when he woke up that that's turned out to be Max Hopp. So it can completely change a player's mindset towards their opponent, can't it? It can. And we all say in the press that doesn't matter who we got, you know, it's going to be a difficult game, but you can't who stop your mind from thinking about certain things. Previously, you know, eight, nine years ago, you got a home nation qualify. It was a gimme sometimes. And nowadays, they're just stronger. They're better. They're harder to beat. But with all due respect to Max, he's had a pretty up and down season himself. So Jamie will probably see this as a, a game that he should win. And obviously, again, no disrespect to Max, but he'd probably be better playing Max right now than Martin Schindler, who seems to have his tail up. And I see both of these guys right now looking for a performance to shoot them forward towards Christmas time. Yeah, the wall, Martin Schindler closing the show this evening, taking on Ireland's Mick McGowan. Jamie Kevin and Max Hopp have met on a couple of occasions previously, but not for the best part of four years. One of them on a European Tour event and one in a Grand Slam qualifier with Jabba winning both. But he was in a much better place in terms of his form and results in 2013. Interesting time coming up for Max Hopp as well, of course, with the World Series event here in Germany and the World Youth Championship around the corner. Yeah, it's a busy time for everybody, isn't it? Grand Prix coming up, Grand Slam, World Series event in Germany. The world is just around the corner. That means Christmas isn't far away. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Christmas come early for darts fans. Of course, the Champions League next weekend as well. Can't wait for that. That's going to be a bit, uh, bit tasty. Maybe yeah, just having a look. See if there's a possibility of leaving the finish. There wasn't. So Max Hobb can breathe. Single 16. It's not what he wanted. But it's worked out well. Hasn't worked out in the end, but he's back for 32 because Jamie Kerbin is a long way behind. Now, Jamie just hasn't Actually, scored well in this leg, he will admit. He doesn't mind scoring like that in a leg like this early in the match. You don't want to be doing it when it's crucial at the very end. Well, Tricky yeah. dart this for Max Hopp. Now, 16. I was just thinking he aimed at a blocked treble there. And perhaps Jamie Cavan in the previous visit may have been better to shoot at treble 18. Had he missed, would have left him 160. He doesn't mind a shot like that. I remember he had a nine dart with a one five four at the end, and he had double seventeen in that combo. So he loves a strange shot. But Max Hopp loves that. Not the best leg of dart you will ever see, but it's one one. And what I'd like to talk about with Jamie is obviously I've been watching his darts for a long time, and he's a good friend of mine. Ninety eight. But yes, he has probably had his worst season on the tour now. The first thing I look at with someone like Jamie is, has anything changed technically? Now, I can't see anything technical with Jamie. I think it was just everything in the head was swirling around. He couldn't make sense of why there was no confidence. And sometimes when you lose a few games that you shouldn't lose, it just affects your ability to execute the game plan within the match. And I think him qualifying for this event is a very big step to get back on the horse. And who's to say that it he won't shoot forward and start winning titles again because he has won some great titles in his time. Yeah, four years now since he has. He had a, a double header of players' championship wins in Wigan in 2013. I remember those very well. He beat me in the first one in Wigan. And then he won the next day against Yella Klassen in the final. Sensational weekend for Jamie. Now, on the other hand, we talked about the technical side of Jamie, which I see has not changed whatsoever. He has filled with his flights a bit, from slim flights to pear-shaped flights, 60. and tried, tried a couple of different aspects. But with Max, there are some definite technical things going on. 
Now, if you look at the rhythm, it's constantly up and down. And when he played his best game of the year against Zoran Lurchbacker in Sindelfingen early this year, his rhythm was impeccable in that match. In the games where he's lost, like last week, his rhythm was just a little bit up and down and it wasn't that reliable. Second match for Jamie Caven. Have to say, Max was slightly unfortunate last week, losing to Kirk Shepard. Did play pretty well. Average around the 100 mark, didn't he, in that defence? He did. It was a good game, actually, and Kirk Shepard was sensational in that match. Max didn't do a great deal wrong. Jamie, 13 for double 16 for a 2-1 lead. Oh, right in the corner. Jamie Caven. That'll do, though. Max to throw first. Game I certainly know that Max is... Quite the analyst of his own performances and his own throw as well. So it is kind of likely that he will have technique wow. changes and try different things if he's watching all his old games back. And I, I, I couldn't agree with you more because that's something I'm doing right now with my game. But what Max needs to really look at, when he plays his best starts, he has a rhythmic throw that never changes. So there, it's changed again already. See, at the beginning of the match, it was prod it then threw it. Now, that was more Van Gerwen-esque. Not even an aim. So it was just straight forward. And it'll be interesting to see if he continues that now. Yeah, we'll just keep that one on replay. That's all. And Jamie Kevin responds with a third max against the Maximizer. See, it's changed again already. Now, the last two darts were exactly the same as the previous visit, but the first one, he did aim it. I think if Max is going to be more consistent, he needs to get a rhythm together that works for him and wow. he should never change it. Fonzie. Gary Anderson aims his first start, then doesn't aim the next two. And he's constantly worked on that rhythm. That's why he's a two-time world champion. Well, Jabba's rhythm seems on. 180 followed by 140. He's going to avail him a shot at 90 because Hop hasn't had a dart. Jamie, at least the ball from 1-2-1. One, one. Choices here, but you'd think he'd go for treble 20. Another single for the bullseye. 65. Max requires 64. In a better leg of darts, you will see. Where Max is on 64 for 12 darts. He'll get a dart or a double. Double 16. Game it's there. Uh, and you can hear that little flick on the flight, which was very kind to him. He'll take that, that's for sure. And his party in the crowd are very, very happy. You couldn't see Max Hop. You could just see the board zoomed in on the double there, but you could tell that he was more deliberate on the double by the length of time it took for it to land in the bed. But that's just natural, isn't it, to be a bit more precise on the doubles. But some of the uh, the really elite players who spoke about Michael Van Gogh, when you just watching him throw, you couldn't tell whether he was going for a treble at the start of the leg or a double at the end. <laughs> Always the same, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not going to go on the same subject the whole time, but I think the second and third dart that Max is trying to use some, some sort of fluid motion without having to aim or stop, I think that's a very good way to go because a lot of great players are starting to use that ploy so that if they're constantly moving, they don't feel as much nerves in their hand when they're throwing. But I feel it's important for Max to aim the first dart. That one there, aim and then continue straight. So he's... There's just no real wow. consistency with the rhythm. And I think it's a teaching thing with Max. If he can go away for one week and just make it natural, I think it'll make all the difference in his game. And what's more, 54. Max is chopping and changing his flights. Last week he was using something quite thin. This week, it's a fixed flight in the stem, which are much heavier. I assume what must be difficult, Paul, and you'll be able to enlarge on this point, is that... You can try different things in practice and intend to do them on the stage, but if it's not going right, it must be so tempting to just switch back to sort of old faithful. Look, um, if Max watches this and he criticizes, criticizes me for what I'm saying, I will hold my hands up and say, yes, you're entitled to what you're saying, because right now I'm doing exactly the same as him. I'm trying to find a solution to make me better. And... There are people out there who are not willing to make changes to get better, and I applaud Max for trying these things. Single 19. The double 16. Now, Max Hop's biggest visit of the match. 
chance to break. Treble 20. Leaves two darts at double eight if he needs them. He only needs one. Well, if you needed Six proof as to how good Max Hopp is, there's your proof. Because his biggest visit of the match, and he produces, in my opinion, the two best darts of the match. Well, the quality is creeping up. Going to have to switch this time. Yeah, I was talking to Dan Dawson last week about Max Hopp and his stubbornness on the treble 20. He just doesn't like to move, does he? One man of 40! I guess you've become used to how your darts behave as well, and some players will feel that it's likely to kind of use that lower dart as a guide. But you see there, caught the flight of the dart that was blocking the bed. And I've been doing a bit of research over the last few weeks about dart speeds and launch angles and 17. the miles, miles per hour between the hand and the board. So that's why you get the big books, Paul. <laughs> and I'm a firm believer that the slower the dart in the air the better they gather together. And I firmly feel that's one of the reasons why Van Gerwen, Chisnell and Anderson are the best scorers in the world. They get a lot of flight in their dart and not a lot of speed, but they get enough. And Anderson's the perfect example of this. He's able to block the bed and still get it either side because of the fact that he can get it together with less speed and less collision force. Sixty. Things have just gone a bit quiet right now, haven't it? I'm not talking about the amount of people in the crowd because it will get rather rowdy later on tonight and over the weekend. But this is a tense match for two guys who really want to win. Yeah, Kevin had been gifted a slight opportunity there, but didn't take it. And now Hop looking to hammer home his advantage. One man of 40. That'll do nicely. I love it when the German crowd when he gets the first treble say, yeah. And then the second goes in, it's yeah. 60. And then the anticipation, then he gets a 20. But in this situation, you've got to think that he's got to go 20s as well. Well, not an awful lot of pressure on this, but it's a sign of respect. Knows his opponent is capable. I was just going to say, he does Jamie like double five. He won his world youth title on that double. Jamie Caven needs another one of those. That's a peach. Double eight. Go on. It's a great shot. Jamie Caven will love that shot. Not just because it breaks back, because they're the kind of shots you start hitting and get your confidence back again. Well, Max missed one dart to open up a two leg cushion. And Kevin landed the 136. 60. To cancel out that break of throw. These two guys on stage, I've spent a bit of time with. 59. Jamie, on a personal level, I've spent a great deal of time with him at his own home. and He's an incredibly funny guy, great sense of humor, awesomely talented. And some of the things I've seen him do on a dartboard, I've never seen from anybody, wow. especially in exhibitions. He is an absolute genius. Yeah, he's never done a conventional nine dart finish, has he, when he's produced his couple of nine darters? He's never gone the uh, usual route. He likes to keep people guessing. Did one of them end on 150 checkout that included the bullseye in the combination? Something like that. One hundred and twenty-five. Max Hop for me isn't just a great dart player I think he's just a fantastic example of a, a great young dart player who speaks well in an incredible amount of languages told me last week that his Dutch is better than his English now which is kind of frightening well, look, but, he's doing everything he can to make wow. the most out of his talent is he Max Hopp he lost a lot of weight a couple of years ago he's Made sure he's in good shape. He handles his media commitments here in Germany where the game of darts has exploded over the last few years. He really is a sort of poster boy for German darts. Well, he's getting to that age where he realises he has to go from the boy to the man. 
this boom in German darts would not have happened without him. It's as simple as that. They needed somebody to take the reins. There were a few great players before him. But Max has taken it to that next level. He has fit into the PDC darting product and done what he needed to do. 60. Now, Jamie, he's having running. to handle the pressure 60. of how to perform with that pressure. And I think he's done a stellar job of that. At the moment, he's in a Jamie very good Cave. match with Jamie Cave. And the first. Game last two legs, Jamie really has brought something extra after a couple of missed starts, a double from Max. Interesting game, as we thought it would be. Yeah, that double eight has been good to Jamie Caven. Just managed to wrestle back control. Hot will need to break again. If he's to remain in this tournament. Tomorrow, of course, played out over the course of the weekend. The seeded wow. players join the action on Saturday, as always, on the European Tour. And then Sunday sees Elastic Steam played out in an afternoon session before the quarters, semis, and final on Sunday evening. Last weekend, of course, in Holland, it was Michael Van Gogh winning on his return, beating Steve Beaton in the final. And the bronze Adonis is in action this evening against Jamie Bain. It's a cracking game, that, you know. Jamie Bain will be thinking, what have I done to deserve that draw? Guarantee you that. But these guys... Both had to qualify to get here. Max Hobb did it last One. night. Philip Ryger, 6 0. Manfred Bildel, 6 5. So only just got through that one. And Kai Godhart, 6 2. He had to play four games to get through, Max Hobb. He beat Christian Bunzer, 6 1, who we saw earlier this season on the European Tour. Really good young talent. Yeah, Jamie had to win three games to get through as well. So between them, this is an eighth game on. The Happy Bet German Darts Grand Prix. As Hop hammers home his second max of this match. A timely one as well. You said to me before the game, Chris, it's very quiet out there. If this crowd becomes partisan, Jamie Caven's going to be able to hear everything that they say. Single nine for double 16. It's much better for Max Hopp. And he's starting to get into this match at the right time. If he is going to win this match, however, he needs to break the Jamie Caven throw. Yeah, 2 8 1 cleaned up in six darts. But Jabba. One thing I will say about the German crowd a 180 from a, an opposing player doesn't silence them. They really do applaud and cheer. Quality darts. And that's the way for Jamie Caven to go about it, isn't it? Absolutely. And let's not forget, Jamie Caven is very, very popular in Germany. He has spent a lot of time over in this part of the world doing exhibitions and meeting people and spending time with people. So it wouldn't shock me if Jamie Caven's got his own little cheer squad out there as well. Yeah, just to uh, go back to the qualifying, Caven be Adrian, Adrian Gray, Rob Hewson and Chris Dobe. To reach his tournament. It was on a night where there was two sets of qualifiers for here and for Reese during a fortnight. You played, of course, there, Paul. There were two nine darters that night. One of them hit against Jamie Caven in the qualifier for Reese by Rob Hewson, a man who he beat in both qualifiers. Yeah, the other one was in wow. Mickey Mansell, who we Can will see in the very next match against Jan Decker. So Mansell had a night out, qualified and took a nine dart leg. Which guarantees him a little souvenir at the, the darts dinner next January. Yeah, we're getting his, is it a silver pin for one on the floor? Unless he hits one, one on the TV, he'll get a gold one. But Jamie Caven hoping to pin double top 59. on his return. Jamie, you require 40. These are the things you can't afford to miss. Game yeah, it's very clean leg. from Jamie, Jamie Caven. Caven. Ten leg makes the you think yourself, first. you get it in one, Game fantastic. On. Get it in two, that's good. You get it in three, sigh of relief, miss it, and your heart starts to go. Because at the minute, Jamie Caven is in charge. Yeah, he managed the match 59. very, very well. Man from Derby. He might well be making a move now. One on. Well, the first start looked... Very, very good for Kevin. Little chance for Hop to get back into it, but he needs to start finding trebles and quick. He's lived in Derby for a long time now with his wow. wife, Debbie. 
He's originally from Leicester. Very proud of being from that part of the world. One hundred and seventy-four. Well, he's going to be very proud of his performance. Should he see off the German hopeful hop here? Really applying the pressure and it's telling. 62. Tell you what, though, that treble 20, there was a bit of oomph behind that one. Yeah, forced it in. Refused to miss. 60. And now the door is perhaps slightly ajar. Yes, Jamie Cavan's on a finish, but hope if he can find a couple of trebles will be as well. Well, he's got room at least this time. 60. But six Jamie start from 167 to break and end Hop's hopes in Germany. It's exactly what Jamie Caven will be saying to himself. Nine six starts. Seven. Don't panic. And that's like a it's like a B plus shot, he would say. He would dearly have loved to have left a double. But now what pressure is he gonna be under? One hundred. Some. So he knows that if he misses this. There is an opportunity for Max to take out with a one treble. However, single 20. Double 16 to see it off. Too many. No, it's not too many. It's too high. Not the end of the world. It will be the end of the leg, however, if this 120 goes. The Shanghai shot for Max Hop. Well, Max Hop has practiced this shot more than any other player. Can he find a path to the treble to get himself a shot at double to stay in this match? Stepped across a long way to the right. Maybe slightly too far. And it may just be a bridge too far as Jamie Caven looks for the double that he's just hit. The double that we haven't seen him miss much in this match. Double eight. To seal the deal. And there it is, Jamie Caven drew to the second round of the Happy Bet German Darts Grand Prix at the expense of the home nation qualifier, Max Hopp. He will not be tasting glory in front of his home crowd this weekend. Hopp heading home, Jamie Caven he heading through. He'll take on Benito van der Pass tomorrow. Next up, the Dutch Jan Decker against Mickey Mansell, who hit a nine data in qualifying. der sich natürlich hier eine Menge vorgenommen hatte. Trotzdem noch mal Applaus für den Maximizer. In 14 Tagen steht das nächste European Tour Event in Riesa an. Die nächste Möglichkeit für ihn und Jamie Caven, einer, der sich in letzter Zeit auch ganz schön schwer getan hat. Er wird froh sein, diese Partie überstanden zu haben. Jamie, congratulations. Uh, I just said, you have, you have difficult times, right? You're, I'm, I'm sure you're happy to, to win that close one here. Yeah? yeah, of course. Um... It wasn't the best game by a long way. Um, Max is much better than that, as I know. It was like we was waiting for each other to, to hit. There was one leg in the middle, he went 180, I went 180, and he hit a big score, I hit a big score. But it was a very, it was very flat in here today, to be fair. But, um, but the, one, the 136 was important, huh? Of course, of course. He, le he left a shot, I think, to go, was it to go 4-2 or, yeah. or in front? Yeah. And the 136 was massive. Um, and I think that probably dictated the way the game went. Um, I'm happy to win. I can't say any more than that. So I'm happy this is my first European of the year. So to win against Max is a big deal. Um, when, when I saw the draw, home nation qualifier, I was thinking everybody but Max. <laughs> but, um, but no, it's, it's nice to play early because tonight it'll be really loud, I think. Yeah. So, uh, but no, I'm happy to win, so thank yeah, you. Yeah. It's good to have you here. And I know you, you, you love to come to Germany. You, 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 you love to play the, the tournaments here. Yeah, so certainly. Uh, exhibitions and demos, yeah. super. Um, Germany is big, bigger than England, I think, you know, in some places. So, um, so yeah, it's good. But to only, play. only in football, you know, that's, that's the poor thing. <laughs> We're bigger. I'm, I'm a Liverpool fan, and we beat Bayern Munich, and that's all that matters to me. So. <laughs> thank you very much. Jamie Caven. Er sagt, es war nicht die beste Partie von beiden, es war so ein Abwarten und wenn der eine mal gut gespielt hat, hat der andere nachgezogen. Da mal 180 